Amsum <laughs> was enjoying a huge scoop of ice cream on a hot summer day. It was cold, creamy, mm -hmm. and perfect. Until suddenly, he froze. A sharp pain <gasps> shot through his head, right behind his eyes. He grabbed his forehead and winced. Amsum wondered, why do we get a brain freeze? Determined to find out, Amsum shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the mouth, where the cold ice cream was still melting. The chill was spreading quickly across the roof of his mouth, an area called the palate. Tiny blood vessels lined its surface. The cold air and ice caused the vessels to shrink suddenly, reducing the blood flow. But as soon as the cold began to fade, the vessels widened again, this time huh? too quickly. The sudden expansion caused a burst of pressure that traveled through the nerves. These nerves didn't just stop at the mouth. They connected directly to the head, especially to the trigeminal nerve, one of the main pathways that carries facial sensations to the brain. When the cold signal reached the brain, huh? it got confused. The brain couldn't tell whether the pain was coming from the mouth or the head, so it interpreted it as pain inside the forehead. That was the sudden stabbing pain known as a brain freeze. Leaping back outside, Om Sum smiled proudly. Om Sum was lying on the grass one afternoon, gazing at the sky. It stretched endlessly above him painted in the brightest blue. He tilted his head and wondered, why does the sky appear blue? His curiosity sparked, and with a blink, Amsum soared upward, racing through the air. He rose higher and higher until he found himself inside the atmosphere, surrounded by swirling particles of air and gas. Sunlight streamed in, dazzling and white, as he floated among the particles, beams of sunlight broke apart around him. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue light scattered in different directions. But then, Aum Sum noticed something special. The blue light rays were bouncing more wildly than all the others. Tiny air particles pushed them this way and that, scattering them across the sky. That's when he realized the truth. Huh? Sunlight looked white, but it was actually made up of many colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Red light had long, stretched out waves, while blue light had short, tiny waves. The tiny particles in the air were better at bouncing the short waves in every direction. So when sunlight entered the atmosphere, the red and yellow waves mostly passed straight through but the blue waves scattered wildly. That was why the whole sky looked blue. <laughs> Amsum was walking through a blooming garden when a sudden tickle sparked in his nose. His face scrunched up, his chest tightened, and with a burst of force he sneezed loudly. The surprise left him puzzled and thinking, why do we sneeze? Determined to find answers, Aum Sum shrank himself down to a tiny size and entered through his own nose. Inside, he found soft winding passages lined with tiny hairs called cilia. Huh? They moved gently back and forth, sweeping away dust like little brooms. The air was filled with floating particles of pollen, and the walls glistened with a thin layer of mucus. As Aum Sum explored further, he noticed groups of nerves hidden under the surface. Each time a speck of dust touched them, sparks of energy shot toward the brain. Suddenly, huh? the calm disappeared. Waves of pollen drifted heavily through the passages. The cilia tried to sweep the irritants away, but the pollen spread faster and thicker. The nerves fired urgently, sending more signals to the brain. Aumsum tried to run, but heavy mucus dripped and clung to him. Then, the brain commanded the chest muscles to squeeze hard. Air filled the lungs, and with an explosive force, a sneeze shot outward. 
The mighty blast cleared away the pollen storm and carried Amsum out into the sunlight. Amsum finally understood why we sneeze. Amsum had just finished a delicious lunch and leaned back in his chair, feeling full and satisfied. But within minutes, his eyes began to droop. His head bobbed slightly as sleep crept in. He just oh. couldn't help yawning. Curious, he wondered, why do we feel sleepy after lunch? Determined to find out, Amsum shrank and entered his own body. He landed inside the stomach, which was now busy churning and mixing food. The walls stretched wide, releasing digestive juices that broke the food into smaller particles. He followed the food as it moved into the small intestine. There, the nutrients were being absorbed into the blood. Amsum noticed something interesting. The blood was now carrying extra glucose from the meal. The glucose traveled quickly through the bloodstream toward different parts of the body, especially the brain. The brain immediately signaled the body to relax, so that more energy could be used for digestion instead of staying alert. Meanwhile, the pancreas released insulin into the bloodstream to help move glucose into the body's cells. This process caused another effect. The brain started producing more of certain calming chemicals, including serotonin. The rise of serotonin made Amsum feel relaxed and content. Soon after, serotonin began turning into melatonin, the oh. hormone that encourages sleep. Leaping back outside, Amsum smiled proudly. Amsum was sitting on a farm fence, watching chickens peck at the ground. Huh? Suddenly, he noticed a hen carefully guarding her nest of eggs. The age-old puzzle struck him at once. What came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> With a leap, Amsum magically flew back in time. <laughs> All around him lived strange feathered reptiles, part dinosaur and part bird. Huh? He watched closely as these creatures laid eggs in nests along huh? the ground. Just then, the earth trembled. The egg monster, a mischievous villain, appeared on the cliffs above. With a rumble, he sent the freshly laid eggs rolling downhill. Dozens of shells bounced and tumbled turning the valley into a storm of chaos. Omsum scrambled between the rocks, dodging as the eggs rolled past him. For a moment, he was trapped in a maze of spinning shells. In the middle of the storm, Omsum noticed something important. The creatures hatching from the eggs never looked exactly like their parents. Some had sharper beaks, others longer feathers, and others stronger legs. These small changes were passed down through generations, little by little. Then the realization struck him. One day, long ago, an egg carried a tiny change in its DNA. From that egg hatched a chick different enough to be called the very first chicken. The parent that laid it wasn't quite a chicken, but the baby inside was. Hence, <laughs> the egg came before the chicken. Om Sum was sitting in a classroom when suddenly a funny sound escaped from him. Everyone giggled and his cheeks turned red. He wondered, why do we fart? Determined to find the answer, Om Sum blinked, shrank down, and entered his own body. He found himself traveling through long, twisting tunnels that formed the digestive system. At first, everything looked calm, with food slowly moving along. Muscles squeezed and pushed the food forward like a conveyor belt. Amsum followed the trail, searching for clues. Suddenly, from deep inside, waves of trapped gas began to appear. They puffed and spread, releasing bubbles into the tunnels. The once quiet passage filled with pressure. Amsum tried to move forward, but the thick gas made the air heavy, pushing him back. Then he noticed something important. Huh? Gas wasn't only caused by moving air. It was also made when bacteria in the intestines broke down food, especially beans, 
vegetables, or anything hard to digest. Huh? Some gas came from swallowed air during eating and drinking. Then suddenly, the walls of the intestines squeezed, pressure rose, and finally the gas rushed to the exit. With a sudden blast, it escaped as a fart. Aumsum tumbled out with the rushing air. Aumsum realized the truth. Farts were simply the body's way of releasing extra gas. Aumsum was gazing at the night sky through his telescope when Saturn appeared in view. It looked like Saturn was wearing a giant glowing bracelet. The sight filled him with awe. He wondered, why does Saturn have rings? With a burst of magic, Aumsum zoomed into space and landed on the glowing rings. At first, the rings seemed solid, but as Aumsum explored, he saw that they were made of countless pieces, pebbles, boulders, and mountains of ice, all racing around Saturn together. Just then, a glowing portal opened before him, pulling him back through time. Aum Sum found himself in Saturn's neighborhood billions of years ago. To his surprise, Saturn did not have any rings at all. Then he saw a huge comet drifting closer and closer. Saturn's powerful gravity pulled at it fiercely. The comet crossed an invisible boundary around the planet, called the Roche Limit. Inside this boundary, Saturn's gravity was so strong that no moon or comet could stay whole. The comet cracked apart, scattering ice and rock into thousands of pieces. Next, Aumsum saw a small icy moon pulled inward. The closer it came, the more Saturn's gravity stretched and ripped it apart. The fragments joined the others, spreading out into wide, thin bands. As the vision faded, Aumsum returned to the present. The swirling particles around him now made sense. 